been a super busy broadcast day, but I'm really anxious to bring my next guest back on the program, Larry Klayman. Welcome, Larry. How are you? Thank you, Jason. Nice to hear from you. I think everybody is very interested in hearing your take, Larry, on the latest insane leftist lunatic dust up, this Ukraine phone call, the subsequent transcript, the opening of the impeachment inquiry. What's on your mind about all this stuff? A lot of things are on my mind. First of all, I read the transcript. The president is right. It is benign. He's not pressing the president of Ukraine. By the way, I'm half Ukrainian. Not that that means anything. But in any event, he wasn't pressing that to happen. But it was not a good idea. And in fact, it was stupid to raise it at this point in time. And for him to do it himself, he should have had an emissary do it. The attorney general should have called over there and asked for an investigation of what happened with Biden and some other companies. The president himself shouldn't do it because he handed an issue to the Democrats. And the Democrats obviously are going to play their hand right out to the very end. It'll probably continue right after the election and it'll continue well after the election. It will probably ensure the reelection of the president. But on the other hand, what the Democrats are trying to do is looking back to what happened with Bill Clinton and his impeachment. Right. Is it, it weakened him enough that it hurt Al Gore, prevented Al Gore from becoming president, I believe. That swung enough votes to elect George W. Bush. Now, I played a role in that with Congressman Bob Barr. We worked on that impeachment together. I didn't do it for that purpose, to influence an election. But the Democrats clearly are. They're using that playbook. And they're also trying to destabilize the economy. They want to drive us into a recession so they can claim that by the time of the election that Trump obviously didn't do the great things that we know that he did do. And last but not least, he's trying, they're trying to kill the deals that he could possibly make with China over trade, with Iran over nuclear weapons, and also North Korea, because, <clears throat> excuse me, who from those countries is going to sign any deal with a president that may be out the door, that's weakened? So what the Democrats did is an act of extreme treachery. It's tyranny. It's traitorous. But Trump handed it to them because right after the conclusion of the Russia collusion investigation, he should not logically be asking a foreign power to investigate a political rival. That was not a good idea. And he handed the issue to the Democrats. But at the same time, Larry, I mean, doesn't the activity of Joe Biden and Hunter Biden represent a really substantial uh, fraud, international corruption? It's something that a president should ask a foreign leader to investigate, isn't it? He should, but he shouldn't do it himself under these circumstances. No, it's, ter it's totally valid. I mean, Biden is a sleazeball. I mean, from the very beginning, the guy plagiarizes other people's work. He promotes his son who... You know, I saw in terms of some of the cable news reports was a drug addict. He has problems. I mean, the guy, it doesn't is not the level of reaping in billions of dollars working for investment houses. So clearly this is a major scandal. And of course, as many people have said, the irony here is, is that this will basically finish off Joe Biden's campaign. Yeah. He's dead as a duck. I didn't think he would make his last long enough to get to a general election anyway. It looks like he's in very poor health. Yeah. He can barely articulate a phrase. And, you know, to go beaten up on Biden when he was toast anyway, I think, was not a smart idea. He's not going to be the nominee of the Democrat Party. And that's in some ways the tragedy of this whole thing is that we've created this mess. And Biden is not even going to be the nominee of the Democrats. I mean, it's theater of the absurd. Now, the president had his heart in the right place. I understand the reaction. I love the president. I you know, the only criticism I've ever had of the president, some of the people that he's hung around that didn't serve him well, that frankly disserved him and disgraced him, uh, not himself personally, but who they are. Some of them are on, are on trial uh, in November. I won't mention names, but this is a situation that didn't have to occur at this time. And, and that's why, you know, I feel sick about the whole thing for the country because the country is going to go through this dog and pony show. If there's any light at the end of the tunnel, Jason, is that the American people need to understand what the government is all about. I use the term government loosely, is that we have a total breakdown in our legal system. It's a corrupt cesspool. I've known that for a long time, from the very first day that I started Judicial Watch on July 29, 1994, and later Freedom Watch, 
but it's gotten much worse. Now, why is it that our Justice Department, which for two and a half going on three years, was controlled by the Trump administration? Why is it that no one, whether it was Sessions or the current Attorney General Bill Barr, looked into this? Why is it that this has to arise by the president asking a foreign leader to do an investigation, a legitimate investigation? It shows that we have no Department of Justice. And it's not enough, and I say this over and over and over again, it's not enough to get documents. It's not enough to go on cable news. It's not enough to beat your chest. Look what I found out now. What we need is justice. That's what we're trying to do at Freedom Watch with our citizens' grand juries. Now, we're going to take up the issue of Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. We're going to put them before our citizens' grand juries. We will indict them. We will try them. We will convict them. We will have them sentenced. It's an open and shut case. Peter Schweitzer will be a major witness. We're going to ask him to come and testify. If not, we'll subpoena him. I'm sure he'll come. He was the one who uncovered this and give him credit for that. But we don't have a Justice Department. And then other public interest groups, so I'll remain nameless for right now. I'm feeling in a charitable mood, <laughs> you know, simply get documents. Now, you know, you know, like I've said many times, frame them, hang them on the wall with pictures of yourself. But it's, it's we need justice right now. And the Democrats are not just out of control. They're evil. They're criminal. And they are trying to destroy the country. That's their goal. Uh, yeah. Radical African-Americans, radical Muslims, radical feminists, radical atheists, the radical Jewish left. Uh, and, you know, we're Jewish, so I don't mean that in an anti-Semitic way. Uh, these people are trying to destroy the country, and they think they'll take control and then reinstate it, not with the vision of our founding fathers, but with the concepts that are being espoused by Ocasio-Cortez, Ilham Omar, and Rashida Tlaib, those kinds of people, not to mention Bernie Sanders, who himself is a self-hating Jew, who associates himself with, uh, with Jew haters. So this is the situation that we're in right now. It just makes me sick that we're getting into this again, just as we got out of the Russian collusion mess. Larry, I wanted to ask you something, because you just said something very important. And I don't want people who are watching us right now to think that you're speaking simply hyperbolically. You're talking about criminal Democrats. And there just recently was this arrest of Ed Buck, the West Hollywood mega donor who is closely linked to Hillary Clinton, Adam Schiff. I mean, this guy is an arch criminal. He is a meth dealer essentially he's been charged with running a drug house he's directly linked to the death of two male prostitutes who died in his house from drug overdoses where he's accused of injecting these guys with crystal meth i mean this is just insanity and the new york times said that he was a small time donor i heard other people complaining that it was mentioned that he was a democratic donor at all and not just talking about that he was a drug dealer but it's important to note this guy plays a role in the democratic establishment he's hanging out with hillary clinton he's hanging out with adam schiff these are the people who are at the center of this you know get donald trump campaign and as you said they're more focused on destroying the country than they are on acting as members of congress who could do anything to actually help us what's going to happen with this guy ed buck you know i don't know much about it jason i'll take a look at it and comment on the next show i've seen it obviously on cable news obviously it looks pretty bad but i don't have the specific facts in that regard we're doing so much right now yeah. that we're focusing on the big fish that well, then let's Tony switch to is going to be Bill Barr, for. let's switch to bill Barr, because along the lines of what you were saying politico is reporting that just hours ago Barr is thrust back into the harsh glare as this ukraine scandal grows and they this is josh gerstein who i've met good journalist he's done a lot of great reporting i think he's won awards he's talking about how the president never directly asked the attorney general to launch an investigation. It's kind of like what you're saying, but is that what the president is intended to do, instruct Bill Barr and to do everything? Or is Bill Barr just protecting Joe Biden? Well, Bill Barr should have been doing it on his own and show, so should have Jeff Sessions before that. But there's nothing wrong in the president asking for an investigation. The president can't you know, do what Obama did, for instance, and basically convict people. Right. before they even have a trial. I mean, Obama made statements about people being guilty and innocent. He did that in this kind of a segue we can talk about in a little bit. 
with Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman. I mean, right. he was signaling to convict George Martin, uh, excuse me, George Zimmerman. But you can ask for an investigation. The problem here is, and what the president did with the president of the Ukraine, is that he did put the onus on Barr. Now, Barr's going to run away from this right now. He's not going to conduct an investigation. He should have done it, opened it before, so should have sessions. But now he's going to run for it for the exit. So don't expect anything to happen, because now the investigation becomes about him in part, and he's going to protect himself. He's a Washington establishment insider, Republican one, and this is the way it works in Washington, D.C. But, you know, we haven't seen any real meaningful action out of the Justice Department, frankly, in my adult life, right. and you cannot expect it. And that's the reason for Freedom Watch. That's the reason why I started Judicial Watch, but Judicial Watch no longer does that because Fitton's not a lawyer. So mostly what they do is just get documents, you know, and that's fine. But but what do you do with the documents when you get them? It's, it's not just a, about getting on Fox News and, and raising money. Judicial Watch is worth $110 million in net worth now. I mean, it, it's great marketing, but it doesn't bring about justice. Hmm. And that's what we have to do right now. And in terms of Democrats being criminals, they are criminals because they're subverting the rule of law. They lie continuously. They're wasting taxpayer money. And whether they are criminals or, or simply people who are on a jihad to take down the country, uh, you know, it's very, very serious. And yeah. it's really it's really bad, Jason. I was in Washington last week and it's like an evil, evil cloud is hanging over the city. I don't like being there. I go there because I have to. Uh, but, you know, except for the monuments and, you know, it kind of reminds me of Rome, <laughs> the barbarians are at the gates. The bar yeah. barbarians are actually they're inside the gates. They're up on Capitol Hill. Well, and many of the judges up there are, are covering for everybody. Not all of them. There are some good ones. But these are the people that are destroying this country right now. Larry, why should we have any reason to believe that William Barr is anything less than a close decades old friend of Joe Biden? Here he is smiling and laughing with him sometime in the 90s. Well, they're all friends, okay? It's the Washington Club. They're all friends. They go out to eat together. They go to parties. Uh, they do this and that. There's no reality in Washington. The reality is stuffing money into your pocket. The reality is getting a higher position. It's the prestige. It's the power. Right. Unfortunately, we don't have people of the stature of our founding fathers anymore. And, of course, you know our founding fathers are being trashed you know, by the left. So you have to destroy that image and that vision. You get down to what you really want to do, which is to take control of the country, take it down to ground zero and build it back up as a socialist gulag uh, and destroy any sense of the Judeo-Christian heritage or ethic or law. And, and that's what it's all about. And all these groups are working together. You know, when they finally seize control, they'll start fighting with each other because they actually have very little in common. I mean, for instance, look at the gay rights movement, you know, with the Muslims, okay, under... Sharia law, Muslims are persecuted. They're right. considered lesser human gays, beings. You know, you sometimes they're even killed. Persecuted. Yeah, so you know, it's, it's a coalition of, of necessity, so to speak, right now. First we have to destroy the country, then we'll sort it out who's going to take power. Yeah. Well, one good thing that came out of your trip to Washington last week, Larry, you had myself and Joel Gilbert as guests on your really cool radio show, Special Prosecutor with Larry claiming that people can hear on Radio America, we were talking about Joel's new film. It was really a fantastic film, The Trayvon Hoax. I was aware, of course, of Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman. I don't think you could have been alive in America at the time and have not heard about it. But obviously, I was inundated with mainstream news, and I didn't really dig into it. So I didn't know the facts and details. Joel has uncovered incredible details in this case uh, that reveal one of the most shocking cases of witness tampering and uh, you know disruption of race relations in history and now it's been completely scrubbed from Amazon Prime people can no longer see the Trayvon hoax movie on Amazon Prime as of today this is an ongoing thing that we've been hearing about whether it's Joel or Alex Jones or Dr. Corsi or Laura Loomer everybody's getting scrubbed from the internet well let's uh, first of all, I don't want to equate Joel Gilbert with Alex Jones, okay? Sorry. This is factual. Now, Alex at one time had his head screwed on. He doesn't have it screwed on anymore, to be blunt. 
Okay. Didn't and, mean to touch yeah. on a sore spot there. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to equate my clients to, to, uh, to Alex Jones. Sorry about that. Uh, not because of anything that he did. He, I mean, he defamed Jerry Corsi. He defamed me. He did the bidding of Roger Stone, which was to take down Corsi. They tried to defame me in the process. There's litigation pending on all of this. So, but the but I'm not trying to contradict you. But what I'm saying is there are people, good people like Laura Loomer like Judge Roy Moore, like Sheriff Joe Arpaio, like many of my other clients that can't get the recognition and can't get the exposure that they want to get. And Joel's a very fine person. He's very serious. He doesn't take any risks. He verifies everything. And, you know, this is a situation where he's hit a nerve because yeah. this involves a situation that ignited the race war. And that's why these entities that don't bother to do research uh, are not carrying him. Now, we need to get it out into the mainstream media because this can actually help solve the race war because if people understand how these opportunists, to use the term loosely, whether it's Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson, shakedown artists is another way you can put it, <laughs> Black Lives Matter, New Black Panthers Party, Farrakhan, a vehement anti-Semite, anti-Christian, uh, you know, they need to understand what this was all about. And, of course, who ignited it? President Obama ignited it by supporting this kind of thing. And, you know, we were doing pretty well with race relations before Obama. And now it's, it's hit an all-time low. And someone who's as serious and somebody who does his homework like Joel winds up getting discriminated against and censored because people don't want to hear it. Yeah. It's a very important film for people to see. They can go to Joel's website, thetrayvonhoax.com, and you can still see the film there, video on demand from Vimeo, which is a good thing. You know, the other thing I've been getting a lot of uh, emails and direct messages about is this story that came out uh, just a few days ago that in response, I believe, to Laura's suit that you're representing her on, Facebook has now said that they are a publisher and can censor whoever they want. Doesn't this fly in the face of their protection from the uh, CDA 230, the Communications Decency Act? It, it did. It did. It does do that. Now, in terms of our defamation case, it's really not terribly relevant what they said. And I guess the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing, but it's very relevant in our antitrust case, which is going forward in the appellate court and in other cases that I'm going to be bringing. But the defamation case that Laura brought, I was the lawyer and I am the lawyer, was being called dangerous. They endangered her life, you know, in a number of different ways. You can see that case at freedomwatchusa.org. Uh, so, yeah, that is a very important admission. And I believe that their lawyers <laughs> made a huge mistake yeah. in the context of a case. They didn't have to say that. But it, we all knew this was true. We know that that is the case. I want to mention one other thing in the remaining time that we have, mm -hmm. uh, Joel, I mean, uh, Jason, if I may. All my friends have a first name that begins with J, it seems. <laughs> in, in any event, uh, we have a hearing next week, a week from today, in Washington, D.C. And this is what I'm telling you is the difference between Freedom Watch and Judicial Watch. Okay, We brought a lawsuit against Robert Mueller. We brought it for violating grand jury secrecy rules, which is criminal. We brought it for illegal surveillance, like what we're seeing with Trump even today. It's continued on. And we brought it for trying to suborn perjury. They wanted Jerry, the special counsel, Mueller, to lie to implicate the president in crimes. He said, I'm not going to do that, not in front of my creator. And he stuck it out. And we won. We fought, quote, the law. And we won. That's not the law, of course. That's the outlaw. So we have this case in court. The case is in front of Judge Helen Siegel Uvell. Uh, she's an, a Clinton appointee. I give her credit, uh, even though she's not politically uh, necessarily in our court. We'll see how she rules. She's issued prior rulings, which are very helpful to us uh, in terms of the precedent. But she's allowing for oral argument. Many of those judges in that courthouse don't want to be in public dealing with these hot potato issues. And I give Judge Uvell uh, accolades for at least allowing us to appear in front of her. Dr. Corsi is going to be there. It's going to be widely covered. 
and it's a major case where we're asking for a huge amount of damage and we're asking you know for other types of relief and the only way that we're going to deter these people in the future is to sock it to them financially uh, and this is a very very important case but it really delineates the difference between what we're doing at Freedom Watch, which is what I used to do at Judicial Watch when I ran it, I, of course I conceived of it and founded it, but the private citizenry need to take action. You know, Judicial Watch occasionally brings an affirmative case. They brought one, for instance, with regard to the voter rolls in California. They didn't go after, you know, the illegals that have registered. In, in California, you can vote three or four times. They want you to do that. I won't get into that and waste the time here. But ask yourself the question, do you really want to spend your resource in California, regardless of what's going on in the voter rolls? California will be Democrat, regardless of what you do. Spend your resource in other states, in swing states, and those kinds of things, where you might get a result with some integrity. But that is a, a rare example of Judicial Watch bringing an affirmative case. Mostly what they do is just bring Freedom of Information Act requests, and I hope then in the future, they'll use that $110 million that they've got in the bank to do actions like Freedom Watch because we need hard-hitting private Justice Department actions to try to restore the rule of law to this country. Yeah, it's really important what you've been doing, particularly in recent uh, time with Dr. Corsi and Sheriff Arpaio and of course everything that you've done for the Bundy family. I mean these are really breakthrough cases that are showing the government that they can't push us around. It's not the government. It's, it's corrupt individuals within the Department of Justice like Robert Mueller, like people in the Bureau of Land Management who framed and tried to kill the Bundys. I mean, Larry, I'm so glad that you and I have gotten to know each other and have established the rapport that we have because I don't think there's anybody out there who is doing the type of work that you're doing at Freedom Watch and people should go to freedomwatchusa.org and click on the red donate button to keep those efforts going. I also I want to mention when you're representing Dr. Corsi, you're doing that in your personal capacity so people can contribute to that right. effort at Larry .com, Corsi Legal Defense Fund .com, and also Bundy. Uh, there are aspects that I'm doing it personally and those which I'm doing it for Freedom Watch, but if you want to support the private practice actions that I'm taking, for instance, the matter's up on appeal right now at the Ninth Circuit. We'll be arguing that appeal on the 23rd of October in San Francisco, California. I urge people to come. Uh, you know, I would actually, that hasn't been set yet. That's a whole other case that we can talk about. That's the Arpaio case, where I'm arguing part of that on the 23rd of, uh, of October. He wants to have his uh, conviction for misdemeanor set aside. But go to cliveandbundydefensefund.org, cliveandbundydefensefund.org, because this is an outrage. Again, it's the current Justice Department that's pursuing this appeal after the indictment was dismissed to cover the backsides of the prosecutors who committed mass prosecutorial misconduct. The president is not in control of the Justice Department. The attorney general, to the extent he is, you know, is, is doing a very limited amount of stuff over there. Uh, he seems to be somewhat afraid of his shadow. And, you know, this is the situation we've been living under for a very long time in Republican administrations. And in Democrat administrations, the Attorney generals uh, are very proactive and they do everything they can to try to hurt conservatives, libertarians and others. But the Republicans don't seem to understand that we have a Justice Department and we can use it. It doesn't have to be done in a partisan way. In fact, I've never been partisan. Is that I am conservative and proud of it. But we need to restore the rule of law and respect for the Constitution. And one last point, Jason, because I hear this all the time, because people don't know. And I understand why they don't know. You know, Trump will go out there and they say, well, you know, we've appointed 120, 130 judges. Most of those judges are establishment Republican judges that are not courageous people. They're the product of how they got there, which is through political patronage, through campaign contributions, through scratching the backs of the politicians, the senators, the president himself. The president rubber stamped what was put on his desk because it was put on his desk by Don McGahn, who sold him out to, to special counsel Robert Mueller and by the Federalist Society, which is a very lukewarm conservative group. 
They're not hardcore conservatives. And that's why we need better judges on the bench. And we need judges who are ideological. We need judges. The left has them. We don't have them. We have a bunch of people that are scared of their shadow, by and large. And the Trump judges I have found are not that much better than the Clinton and Obama judges when it comes to doing what needs to be done. And, you know, Larry, I think you might be being a bit too generous when you say that uh, William Barr is afraid of his shadow. You were one of the first people to talk to me about the substantial concerns related to William Barr, his former role as the outside counsel for the CIA, his various uh, acts with regard to the Iran-Contra scandal, the questionable pardons under George H.W. Bush. I'm concerned that he's a deep state goaltender who's gotten himself inserted in there specifically to disrupt the dissemination of justice under a Trump presidency? Well, this is, this is the nature of, of the animal. The people that get to these positions have to say the right things. They have to do the right things, quote unquote. They can't rock the boat. Now, you know, he did stop the Mueller investigation, but it was just a shell game. It then went on to Congress. I give him credit for that. But then he was threatened with criminal contempt for what occurred in that process and threatened with impeachment. The Democrats now own him. They own him, lock, stock, and barrel. And an establishment person like Barr is not gonna stick his neck out too far. And then ask yourself the question, I've written him a letter over Bundy. I said, stop this unjust appeal. Stop this political prosecution. I, even ha I have not even had the courtesy of a response. Hmm. And this is the way things work. This is the way Christopher Wray is even worse, running the FBI, he's a yes man. He's, you know, not someone with a great deal of gravitas. I mean, he, he covers up for what's going at the, on at the FBI. This is the deep state. The deep state is on both sides of the political aisles, not just the Democrats. And how is it the Democrats are able to get away with all of this? Because it's one happy family in Washington, D.C. Yeah. They scratch yeah, I, each other's backs. Absolutely. I share your concerns with regard to Christopher Ray. I know you've been very busy and you've got only limited time. I'm sure you haven't had a chance to see the video that we played last night. Mike Moore, editor of True Pundit, and myself went to Lancaster, Pennsylvania to attend a speaking event where Andrew McCabe apparently received something on the order of $75,000 to speak to a bunch of dopes. And uh, he went to considerable lengths, Larry, pretty shocking actually, to avoid speaking to Michael and myself. And I have serious questions if anything will happen to Andrew McCabe with regard to prosecution. No, nothing's going to happen. And, and that's why this country's headed for revolution, Jason. I'm not advocating violence, or I, I always say peaceful and legal, but. The reality is we're headed to revolution. When the American people finally figure out what's going on, there'll be revolution. You know what Woody Allen said? You know why revolution occurred in Russia? When they figured out that the word czar was spelled two different ways. They thought they were being defrauded. Well, I mean, that's humor. But the fact is the American people know that they're lied to every minute of every day by this government. And when someone like Trump comes into office and he tries to do something about it, they'll destroy him too. Yeah, and that's what that's why doing. this impeachment, this impeachment that they're going down that road, if they vote out articles of impeachment, I would not be surprised to see violence in the streets between left and right. I don't want to see it, but I think it will ignite. Wow. Well, let's hope that doesn't happen. You've been saying for months, uh, for months that they could impeach a ham sandwich, and now it looks as if... They're definitely attempting to do that. Nancy Pelosi looks to me like somebody should give her a ham sandwich. She just always seems like a quivering drunk whenever I see her speaking. She's such a, like a skeletor, kind of uh, uneasy on her feet, unable to speak a cogent sentence. And, and here she is that's saying that the president has violated his oath of yeah, office. And somebody even suggested the death penalty. She's a witch. Okay, so, I mean, you've got two major witches, Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi. There's some witches on the Republican side, too, but not with this kind of power, yeah. believe me. Wow. And this is really, it's a crime against the United States during this very difficult period where we're at risk internationally and, and internally and where people are at, at odds with race wars and, and other wars, religious wars. And it, it's just sickening. And, you know, I'm sorry to say this, Jason, but I think our days are numbered. You and I will get across the finish line, but, you know, future generations, unless they wake up, 
you know, put their cell phone down, stop texting and start paying attention. The days of this country are extremely limited. I hope that's not correct, but I know where you're coming from, Larry. I know you're very busy and you don't have much time left. So before we go, I just want to remind everybody to visit freedomwatchusa.org and to click on the red donate button. Keep Larry and his team financially healthy and able to defend this country against a rogue Department of Justice. It's also important that people remember that uh, I can't keep doing this without your support. Crowdsource the Truth is a viewer sponsor resource. So if you're watching the show, even if you're just watching the free shows, please get over to patreon.com slash crowdsource the truth or subscribestar.com slash crowdsource the truth and become a sponsor. You can watch that great show that Michael Moore and I did last night along with a ton of other exclusive content that you're only going to get once you become a sponsor. Larry, I want to thank you so much and uh, we'll have you back. Thank you, Jason. You're here. vital of this country. When I use the word if, I'm saying if we don't arrest what's happening now, and I'm doing my best to do it, and I need support from the American people to do it, because we are at the end if we don't take significant peaceful and legal action. Absolutely. Larry, thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks. I'll see you tomorrow.